Good morning, everyone. A warm welcome to everyone worshiping here at Halliburton United Church and all those watching our service on YouTube this morning. Halliburton truly reflected the beauty that God has created this morning in our winter wonderland as we drove to church. You may notice that the church's tree is up. How incredible. And we need to thank Craig and Maggie and Melissa for doing this for us. I think they deserve a wonderful round of applause. <laughs> Last week when the tree wasn't up, I felt really sad. Oh. And then oh. here it is today. That's magic. You have seen the announcements as they've gone by, and I've been asked today to say a few words about the charity for this month, which is the Four Seas Food Bank. I am privileged to be on the board of the food bank. Thanks mainly to Ron and Marg. They really um, talked me into, maybe pushed me a little, about becoming a board member. And I thought it was just a food bank. I'd been associated with food banks before, but nothing like the food bank we have here in Halliburton that was actually started by some of the churches as they saw the poverty and the need for food. The Four C's, as it's called, is an unusual food bank because it doesn't receive any government funding. We receive all of the funding through donations and, and through this unique Lillian, which I didn't even know about the connection between the two. I noticed that Canoe FM just donated $5,000 of the money that they had uh, raised to our food bank. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what happens at the food bank. Of course, there's food that's given out once a month. There's all kinds of vouchers, and we are really now looking at the voucher system, giving more people the opportunity to go to the grocery store and buy what they need. A voucher for $40, for example, goes to everyone who comes to the food bank, and that can buy milk, cheese, butter, and ice cream, of course, the staple of life. Um, we have 300 registered households for the food bank, and usually we have, see an average of 65 to 70 a month. It's interesting to me that most of these are single people, and I expected them to be, well, on the older side. They're not. We have families that are involved, and right now we're getting ready to honor over 185 families with toys, food vouchers for the Christmas service. Judy McDuff, who is our own guardian angel, she knows everything about the food bank. If you want to ask any question, she has the answer. But what else happens? The money is raised that the churches give, that we'll give, that people donate, and from the Lillian. Not enough money comes in in donations to pay the about $40,000 a month for the food bank. Other money that comes in through the Lillian is used for things like um, making donations to our two fuel banks. And we make donations to the school for milk program, School for Milk, Meals on Wheels. And this year, we have set up permanently a voluntary bursary for youth at the high school who are graduating, who've given well beyond the 40 hours. And that's to honor all the people who volunteered in the past, like Ron and Mark. So emergency travel funds, going to the dentist for a child who needed to go over to Barrie and have special things done to his teeth. All of that is done through the donations you make to the 4C as well as the food bank. So people in, the, in Halliburton know the service providers know to call Judy, usually, and tell them that there is a need. This is very, very impressive, well beyond the food bank. We're looking at the food bank being, maybe being open more than one day a month to help our needy people. So when you give to the food bank, think of all those people, all those families who are in need. We're going to start today's uh, service with a prayer of approach. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. 
and also with you. I sure, sorry, just having a little trouble reading that. Hmm? A shout has come from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of the root. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. With righteousness, the staff shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Righteousness Righteousness shall shall be be the belt belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the together and a little child shall lead them. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let us pray together. In this this season season of prophecy, prophecy, promise, promise, and preparation, preparation, we we come come to be be renewed and refreshed. refreshed. We We come come to to be inspired inspired by stories of a Messiah who will will change change the world world and change change us. us. Lord, Lord, we pray, pray. give us ears to listen for words of hope and peace, promise Promise and challenge. Give Give us us open minds and open hearts so that we might receive the blessings you have in store for us in this season of waiting. We worship you, our God, the one who brings all things to fulfillment through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I think we're calling uh, Ron and Debbie to to light the uh, Advent candle. Hmm. Good morning. Today we light the first candle, the candle of peace, knowing that Jesus alone can make us feel at rest in this chaotic world, and it truly is chaotic right now. He calms our hearts as we await for his second coming. In Philippians 4, Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May God grant us the peace as we wait for glory, Christ's glorious return. In a candle of peace, A candle to signal that conflict must cease For Jesus is coming to show us the way A message of peace humbly laid in the hay Thanks guys Morning! Oh, I'll take this off I guess yeah, thanks, uh, Ron and Debbie, for um, candlelighting, for Leslie for leading us this morning. And sorry, sorry about the small print. We're going to have to do something about the print, Lynn. I think we're going to have to give them a, a printed piece up in the pulpit here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing that. It's my. It's on me. But yeah, and it, we we want to try to show the person with the the thing up there. So probably the best way to go. Um, so yeah, good morning. Hi out there, everybody. Who all's here today? I've got Karen Freibort. <laughs> good morning from my comfy chair. Glad to connect. <laughs> oh, she had more surgery. Oh, there you go. Um, yep. Twenty in house, which is what we had last week, I think. Twenty two. Okay. We had Cheryl Russell and Lisa and Peggy and Jen Burke and Joy Cooper and Paul and Nancy. 
and Jan and Wayne Cox, Alan and Linda Galt, uh, Alan, sorry, Alan and Sharon, Ernie and Linda Collette, Arlene Birch up in Kinesis Lake, and uh, Valerie Griffin signed in, and Eunice Pierce from Sudbury. Don't forget Eunice. Um, so uh, we've added a camera today. There may, I don't know what the difference will be for anyone's experience online. We'll be interested to hear that. We, I've, I put up the old, older camera that we, we started out with before we got the newer camera in this process, and that's what's covering the, the lectern side today. Uh, and the candle, so it's, and I should be clearer on this side. <laughs> because of that? Yeah, because it's given us more resolution over here, so uh, we'll see how that works. So what, what's going on? Um, yeah. I don't think I have any other announcements. We've... Uh, should we still turn live to the Yes, okay, good point. So I, I've been, it was on the screen, but uh, in case you missed it, we are not going to do a live Christmas Eve service again this year for fairly obvious reasons that A, numbers are going up these days, and uh, we, wouldn't, we don't know what we're up, often when you have a Christmas Eve service, you have people from all over fill the church right up, and that's a little bit of a scary prospect, so we don't know quite how to handle that. So we're going to record, and, and, but produce it like a live stream at 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve. So hopefully you can check in and, uh, and, and pick that up. Of course, you can pick it up anytime after that as well. So, uh, uh, yeah, please um, keep your ears open. It'll start at, we'll, we'll start at about quarter to seven to get people, um, so people, and people can chat as usual. People like to chat on there, and if you, if you do that, you're welcome to do that. Okay, so that's what's happening. And uh, regular services at the regular time on... Um, uh, Boxing Day, December 26th, and January 2nd, I believe. I got this new sweater. I'm trying to keep the, this down, but every time I put a guitar on it, it goes back up again. Sorry. All right. Let's uh, listen to an instrumental piece by Melissa as we calm our hearts and, and begin our worship. Continue. Thank you, Melissa. It sounded like it had a little bit of Pachelbel's Canon and stirred into that mix. I have several new books that are taking classical pieces and Christmas pieces, and it's not coming together. Ooh, that was a nice, nice touch. So we're going to do um, in Christ alone. So in Christ alone, a relatively new hymn. 
written by Keith Getty. Remember a few weeks ago, you remember this um, uh, new song I, I tried to teach y'all? Uh, what was that one called? It's a, it's a good it's a good thing to uh, it's a good thing I forget anyway we'll have to bring it back because I've already forgot the title so and it was written by Keith Getty and um, so this is by Keith Getty and Stuart Townend uh, and it, we have done it quite a bit over the over the years and in Christ alone I, I I thought it's a little bit it's got it's got a flavor of Advent to it. Uh, in Christ alone, the second verse, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, the gift of us. So it's got a bit of, a, of kind of the Christmas perspective. And at the end, it talks about uh, uh, what till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ, I stand. So it's got a bit of both advents. Okay, let's let's do the very ending as our... Okay. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter I stand in Christ alone who took on flesh fullness of God in helpless babe this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay. Light of the world by darkness slain, and bursting forth the glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, his curse has lost its grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Please have a seat. Okay, how many remember ever singing that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, had good. A coffee before. Yeah. I a coffee would follow with it. Oh, really? I changed your key on you. That might oh, be. That's my one. Yeah. Okay. Wasn't pretty. Okay. Let's, uh, let's continue to worship the Lord as we present our offering. It's fortunate that Barb Peel just had her soldier surgery, but she's able to come in today and help. So, <laughs> Barb, Barb, good to see you. John, John with her, of course, John. Well, John's here. Uh, of course he's here. <laughs> John. 
We give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Prayers. Um, yes, I saw that. Nancy Stinson passed away. So that's uh, that's Mike uh, Mike Easton's sister, and she has another sister, Eleanor. Uh, so yeah, wow. I, we knew she was ill, but we didn't know. Uh, Nancy Stinson. And uh, I'm I put a so my friend Ken Stouffer's wife Ushi Stouffer uh, got flown to Markham. Stouffville Hospital uh, yesterday, so she's been put on a ventilator, and uh, the, the family are calling it double pneumonia. I we kind of suspect it might be COVID, but anyway, it's oh. pretty serious stuff. So Ushi Stouffer. Where do they live? Uh, they live in Alliston. Any, any others? Roberta. Stephanie and Daniel Bohan had a, a son named Rowan. Oh, nice. Rowan. Okay. You probably can't hear her out there in uh, uh, virtual land, but so I'll just say, uh, Roberta, Roberta is giving thanks for a new great grandson by the name of Rowan. So thanks for Rowan today. Safe arrival. Yeah, Lynn. Oh, okay. Joan Gall Galley has passed away. So fa the family of Joan. You put it on here? Oh, I see it. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yes, good. Wow. Anybody else? Okay, let's pray. Ah, Lord, we thank you for this great privilege of prayer, um, a way to cast our, our cares upon you because you care for us, Lord, and to, to claim the, the wonderful promises that uh, have been set forth for us in Scripture and confirmed to us by your Spirit. Lord, so we, we lift our concerns and our, our sometimes heavy hearts to you, that you would meet these needs, and uh, we, we lift them into your, into your hands. We pray for help. We pray for uh, intervention. We pray for healing and comfort and encouragement, whatever the needs might be. We pray especially for our world as we continue to battle uh, the COVID-19 virus. Lord, we, uh, we ask for your, your assistance and that with, there will be an end to this pandemic. We, we thank you for, uh, for vaccines and uh, other ways and means that have been found to alleviate the suffering, to, to help the, the sick to recover. Lord, and we, we place before you those who are vulnerable and those who are risking themselves, Lord, and uh, we lift, continue to lift this into your hands. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. And as we think about peace this day, Lord, we think of those places in our world where there is armed conflicts. There are armed conflicts, Lord, and people's lives are at risk. We ask for peace there. We ask for the end to these um, uh, disagreements and, and wars, uh, places like Afghanistan and Syria and places in Africa, Lord, we, and many other spots in the world. We, we lift them to you that your peace might prevail and might, might return. Lord, we remember before you our own nation and it's uh, some natural uh, tragedies which have happened both on the East Coast and the West, <clears throat> British Columbia and, and Atlantic Canada. We ask for your help for them to recover. We pray for Caroline Argarides, the family of Joan Galley, Olive and Jim Waugh, Eleanor Gray, Sylvia Holland, Peter Vardy, Fred Chapel, Paul, Joy Cooper, Jim Liddell. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. 
We remember Tuya Corpola, David Paddock, Ruth Rendell Adams, Jan Cox, Bernie and Linda Harper, Mary Seacrest, Gary Swaggerman, Kelsey Barnum, Michael Broadhagen Jr., John Payne, Judy Davis, Pat Kennedy, and Peter Robinson. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And we remember Ron Mark Jr., Sean Cook, Mark and his wife Teresa Beach, Carol Parnell, Kathy Bins, Amy Blanchard, Allie and Courtney, John Romas, Caroline Hunter, Maureen Duquette, Chris Rusk, and John Bond. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. We pray for um, where was it? Ron and Olive Cooper, Yolande Dehan, Don and Karen Tran, Katie Woodstra, Darko Knezovich, Steve Wigan, Sadie and Lindsay Lester, and the family of Nancy Stinson. And we give you thanks and praise for the safe arrival of baby boy Rowan. And others, Lord, we simply bring to you in the quiet of our own hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We make all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So I'll invite Leslie to come on back and to read uh, our scripture. Before we read the, pa- the prayer um, of elimination together, and so I won't get a call from Manet saying your glasses need to be replaced. They are for reading only, and I didn't take them off. That's why I couldn't <laughs> see it. I'm surprised he didn't stand up and say something. I, I, that's why I said it first. <laughs> With Renee, you have to get in there early. Okay. Shall we say the prayer together, please? Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before I read the scripture today with every large word that's written in the Bible, <laughs> um, I, I, at Christmas time I take out this Bible. You may not be able to see it, it's so small. And I put it with the Nativity because it's written to Maggie Chester from her Sunday school teacher, Christmas 1900. <gasps> Maggie Chester was my grandmother, who lived to be almost 106. I never heard her called Maggie in my life, so I think I'm surprised she accepted this with that on. They called her Margaret. And she is the one who every night before she went to bed had a bowl of ice cream with real Halliburton maple syrup on it. When I say it's the staff of life, it was for her. 106. Two months short of 106 and still playing duplicate Master Bridge. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip Tetrarch of Iternia and Trachonitis, and Lysantius Tetrarch of Abilene during the high priesthood of Aeneas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all of the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet, a voice of one is calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and every hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all people will see God's salvation. May the words of our Lord be acceptable in our sight. Lord, your strength and our Redeemer. Thanks again, Leslie. 
we are going to sing a wonderful Advent hymn, Hark the Glad Sound, the Savior Comes. Sound, the Savior comes, the Savior promised long. Let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song. He comes, the prisoners to release in Satan's bondage held. The gates of brass before him burst, the iron fetters yield. He comes the broken heart to bind, the bleeding soul to cure. And with the treasures of his grace to bless the humble poor. Our glad Hosanna's Prince of Peace, I welcome shall proclaim, and heaven's eternal arches ring with my beloved Let's pray. Ah, Lord, as we consider your word, the scriptures which uh, you have preserved, preserved for us and um, you use in our lives and in our, our hearts, Lord, we pray that you would, you would teach us from them today, today and that you would move among us by your spirit, by the Holy Spirit, uh, to teach us the truth that sets us free. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Message is called the peace path. Now that's you see, as opposed to the war path, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm always. I don't know if you realize that a lot of thought goes into these sermon titles, and you know, try to a little play on words or something. Some with more success than others. So peace is our topic of the day. It's it's hard for us to imagine what it is for a lot of people in the world, what, what it's like. Um, we live in an amazingly peaceful part of the world. <laughs> we, we've had quiet and uh, f- kind of freedom from war for many, many, many uh, decades, maybe, I don't know, centuries. So it's, it's been a long time. But in many parts of the world, that's not the case. Uh, people live in fear of their lives, just trying to live their lives a normal life, but there's armed conflict all around them. And uh, so, you know, it's... It's, it's hugely strain, straining and stressful. So uh, m- most of the West has been pretty clear of, of war recently, but uh, um, Asia and Africa, not so much. Um, so, so, for instance, some of the, the best known conflicts right now are in Afghanistan, ongoing. The Taliban has basically taken it back over, but they're still fighting. Syria, there's still a civil war going on. Um, Africa, there's about, about half the nations of Africa have some kind of uh, uh, civil strife or war happening. Uh, even, and even with that, so on the one hand and on the other hand, on the one hand, we, we live probably in one of the most peaceful eras in human history <laughs> uh, because it, it's declined a lot since about 1500. It's just gone way down. So there's no big major conflicts of empire versus empire right now. Uh, there's, there's seems to be a, a restless quiet b- between them all. We hope that will continue because uh, we know what could happen if something like that were to start up again. But uh, on the other hand, there's still dozens of wars happening in the world. Um, and it's, it, it, it just makes life so difficult for, for those involved. And if you boil down kind of the causes of these hostilities... I think you'll find them rooted in things like, well, what, what, I mean, to think, why? 
Why are people fighting? Why are people blowing up hospitals? Why are people killing each other? You know, what, what provokes them or uh, motivates them to do these kinds of things? And so and they're clearly things like hatred, sometimes greed, selfishness, anger, big part, injustice, to be fair, um, revenge, a lust for, just a lust for violence. All those kinds of things play into the motivation and the, what's behind perhaps a dictator or, a, or a, a, the leader of a, a civil rebellion you know, that, that pushes them and, and, and instigates them to do these kinds of things. And all those things I just listed, such as hatred and greed and selfishness and anger, etc., <laughs> that's stuff that's also known as sin. Basically, the Bible calls it sin. Now, in church, we talk about sin a lot. The world doesn't talk about it much anymore, uh, although it's pretty central to our faith because basically our faith is around the person of Jesus Christ who came into the world to save sinners. In fact, his name means God saves. From what? Well, from sin, from this you know, internal, deep problem, brokenness, failing of humans across the board. So Paul, for instance, says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're, we're all in that boat. I mean, I'm trying to find, always trying to find other words to, to, uh, to maybe help describe to our, our current generation what sin is. You know, you know, a good one, sort of good, is issues. People don't have sin anymore. They've got issues. <laughs> maybe they've got baggage. I don't know. <laughs> But it amounts to the same thing. I mean, issues kind of lets you off the hook a bit. And okay, but, and we've all got issues because we've all got sin. So, so we may have anger issues. We may have, um, you know, gambling issues, addiction issues, uh, greed issues. But, um, you know, it's just another word for sin. So, so the Bible and Scripture and Christ and the Spirit of God are always calling us to accountability for that, which... You know, in our world, there, there tends to be a lot of justification for it and kind of try, try to, people trying to get off the hook about it. And there are lots of reasons that provoke people to do things that are, are horrid in and of themselves. You know, people are abused and, you know, they react and respond, all, all that kind of stuff's for sure there. But if we want to have peace in our world, there needs to be a change of heart. That's really, there's one of two ways to bring peace in the, in the face of conflict. One, you have to have uh, uh, peacekeepers, quote-unquote, in place who are stronger than the ones who are creating the conflicts. You know, bigger guns, more authority, uh, who, who, you know, who just put a stop to it by means of law and, uh, and basically armed, uh, stronger arms. So that's one way of doing it. The, the problem with that way is, you know, once that, that is taken out of the, out of the way, the whole thing bubbles right back up again because nobody's changed within. And the reasons for their, you know, the, uh, what's the, their uh, motivation for what they're doing in the first place, for their violence or whatever, you know, has not been changed. So the gospel is really about that. The gospel of Jesus Christ is about that. It's about changing people from the inside out, from changing people's hearts, transforming us within so that, uh, you know, it deals with those deep, deep problems. And the cross of Christ is about that. It's about dealing with the deepest ailments and issues and sins of humankind. Uh, so I'm going to suggest we look at three Ps today. <laughs> so just, you know, from, as a memory tool, and so I can have three points to my sermon. Uh, and I'll tell you what they are off the top so you can, you can know when we're getting... We're moving along through this. So three Ps are penitence, passion, and prayer. Now, you could think of others. Those are the ones I thought of for this. Penitence, passion, and prayer with respect to peace. And penitence, first of all, because that's kind of what the Scripture is about today. Um, penitence, we don't use the word penitence, but it starts with P, so I use it here. We use the word re repentance, the same thing. So roughly the same thing. Confession. Uh, kind of acknowledgement, personal acknowledgement for failings or, or misdeeds, uh, bad, bad thinking, repent, repentance. The, the word actually means to rethink, right? Pen, pense, penser in French, to, to think. 
uh, it's from, from a Latin word to think, and re so repent means to think. The, the word in the Greek, which is what the New Testament's written in, is metanoia, which, which basically means the same kind of thing, but also means to turn around, to, to turn from this way to that way. I, I got to keep going this way. So, you know, it means to, turn, to, to have an about face in our thinking. So just a little background for it. The, it now, I, I love telling this joke because the wonderful thing about my old jokes is y'all forget them all the time. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you again. So there's this, uh, there's this guy, Bob, who decided to paint the house. And, you know, he, he was running low on paint. In fact, he was kind of cheap. So he, you know, he just added a whole lot of water to the paint can. And he slathered it on. It looked beautiful until this great big thunderstorm came along. And the rain gushed down and all his paint washed off. And then the thunderstorm continued, and there was a big snap of lightning and a crack of thunder. And then a big voice came from on high. Bob, repaint, repaint, and thin no more. <laughs> now you remember it. The, our reading is about that. It's about uh, John the Baptist and, and what he was all about. And it, it, John the Baptist is a strange duck. In the Gospels, like why? Why was he there? Why was he necessary? He's obviously in the early church when they when they put together the Gospels, um, he was a big part of the deal. And all four Gospels have you know information and you know historical background to Jesus' ministry, being John the Baptist doing his thing. And so there are a bunch of reasons for that, but uh, it, essentially he came. Well, let's see what he came to do. He says he came, first of all, it's set historically, all those crazy names that uh, Leslie was pronouncing, <laughs> you know, is, is to tell us that Luke was a historian, the, the author of this gospel, and he talks about it. He says, I've, I've carefully looked, you know, checked the stuff out, and I'm just telling you what I found out. And so he tells us the, the, who, who, who was the emperor of the day was Tiberius Caesar, and who were the tetrarchs, the various rulers of the various regions. And he says, in, in, in those days, John, the son of Zechariah, uh, came into the desert, and he went into all the country around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. That's what he was doing. He was preaching a baptism. I've never preached a baptism, <laughs> but he preached a baptism for the, for the forgiveness of sins, a baptism of repentance. Repentance. Repentance for the forgiveness of sins. So, like, all he was doing was calling out to people and saying, you know, you've got to change your ways. you got to, and prepare the way for the Lord. So then it immediately quotes that bit from Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, so referring, seeing this as referring to John the Baptist, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. So in order to prepare the way for the Messiah, it was in order that someone come and, and proclaim repentance and that people come to this person and, uh, you know, and confess their sins and repent, change their ways. And, and baptism was to be a sign of that. And he, a little later, we didn't read all this, but there's, uh, there's, there's some examples of the kinds of things people were repenting of. Um, so, for instance, um, what should we do then, the crowd asked. And John said, whoever's got two tunics should share with the one who has none. And the one who has food should do the same. So he's saying, okay, instead of being greedy and selfish and, you know, keeping everything to yourself, make sure you share what you've got with people and have a heart for the poor. Tax collectors came and said, uh, uh, what should we do? He says, don't collect any more than you were required to. They were infamous, famous tax collectors for, for over-collecting in G Jesus' day. So fortunately, that's changed mightily since then. <laughs> don't collect any more than you were required to, he told them. So in other words, you know, don't be greedy, don't be, uh, uh, don't cheat. Don't cheat people out of their money. Soldiers, don't extort, what, what should we do? Don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. In other words, don't, don't bully and extort people. <laughs> um, so those are some e examples of the kinds of things that uh, John the Baptist was, was calling people into. But it's interesting that the, the preparation then for the coming of the Messiah was that people, people of the day were to, uh, to turn away from their sins, to, to, to as best as they could you know, purify their hearts. 
which is pretty much the same as it is now. You know, if we want to, uh, uh, to encounter the Messiah, Jesus Christ, in our hearts and lives, to, we have to begin by some kind of repentance. We have to come by, by understanding that we need, uh, we need his help. We need his intervention. We need his forgiveness. We need the cross of Christ. We need, uh, we need a savior. We need a deliverer. We are, that we are, there's something broken inside, and we want forgiveness. And that, that's a humbling of ourselves, and that's called repentance. Now, the thing about it is, we don't just start that way. We continue that way as Christians. The Christian life is not, a, oh, I've repented, I've come to God for forgiveness, and now I'm going to go on my, my merry way. Because we're, we have a challenge lifelong uh, in, in dealing with the sin, in the, the writer of Hebrews puts it, the sin that does so easily beset us. And if you don't know that's true, you're, you're kidding yourself. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all of us here do, and all of you out there do. You know that every day we have challenges. It's interesting that um, uh, uh, was it Debbie and Ron, De- when De- Debbie r- r- uh, lit the one candle, to, uh, no, Ron lit the candle, Debbie read the readings, right? <laughs> so one of the readings is, uh, you know, about peace. But th- it's put this way. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. Right? So it's interesting that peace is put together with prayer and, uh, you know, taking your, your, your burdens and your anxieties to the Lord in prayer. And to, to me, to do that is actually a, a, a form of repentance. Because when you don't do that, you're saying, I can do it. You're unconsciously, we're saying, well, I can handle this myself. And when you come to the Lord, you're saying, I can't handle it myself. I need your help. I need your intervention. I'm really worried about this. And, you know, that's the kind of thing we have to do every day. That's a, that's a daily repentance thing. I wake up on a Sunday morning. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, i got to go preach three services. <laughs> and anxiety begins to rise. And I have to go back and practice this as a discipline. This is a discipline of the Christian life. Uh, is is praying in the face of anxiety. I mean, we, we might be able to do some things. I try to write a bit of a sermon here. <laughs> it's a little bit of preparation, but but that doesn't take away all the anxiety. I have to say, Lord, please, you know, I'm going to trust the day to you, and uh, I put it in your hands. And then the peace that passes understanding keeps you my heart. And I'm sure, if not all of you, most of us have, have experienced that. Because there's stuff just keeps constantly cropping up. My, my, hopefully, son Stephen with his family is, is flying here from Germany on Friday. Uh huh. Hopefully, and I really would like to see them. Have a, a, we've got a little grandson, Luke, who's uh, he's over I don't know a year and a half plus, and you know we've never seen him face to face yet. And uh, you guys are looking forward to seeing your family. I mean, I haven't seen Steve for a couple of years face-to-face, and I'm a little anxious. Omicron virus, you know, whatever's going on, the Omicron uh, variant is uh, shutting down travel to some degree. So we're on tender hooks. But, you know, I can't do anything about it. Lord, I'll lift it to you, and, uh, you know, may it happen, or may we have peace no matter what happens. So, so, but to do that is a practice of repentance, essentially. You may, may not look at it that way, but it is. So as long as we think we can t- handle things and take care of things all by ourselves, you know, that's sin. And, and uh, Paul writes in Romans, he says, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Interesting. So whenever we're acting and living outside of trust in God, trust in Christ, uh, we're actually falling into sin. So it's constantly that we're called to repent. And I wish, I don't, I don't think Christians get that. We kind of think... We, I've noticed too much of this in our in the population of, of Christians that they, they think that they're right and that they couldn't possibly need correction. <laughs> and we constantly need correction. All of us. Me, you, every denomin- person in every denomination. And so, so, you know, when people, people are so darn sure of themselves, like uh, one of the great prayers in the Old Testament is, Lord, search me and know me and try my, me, try my anxious thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. 
Because a lot of what's, what, makes, what drives us is not even conscious to us. We've got all kinds of stuff coming from our background and our past and our habits and our influences that, that just have just crept in on us, and we're not really very aware of them. We're not self-aware enough to realize that, that we you know, may be off the rails in some department. So we need to have that habit, that perspective daily, Lord, search me and know me and try me and see if there be some wicked way in me. Because I'm, you know, I think I'm right, but maybe I'm wrong. So, and, and the world around us needs to see us that way. I think part of the problem with the church is people have a perspective of the church that is, oh, you know, they think they're all that. They think they got it all together. They think they're better than we are. And that should never have been the message that came to people from, from the church of Jesus Christ. It should always have been, you know, I'm, it should, should always be the, I, the beggars that have found bread that are coming to the rest of the world with, hey, I, I know where to find some bread. So until we understand that we're part of the problem, we aren't going to be part of the solution as far as peace is concerned in our world and in our local. Penitence brings peace within, peace of God that passes understanding. Peace with God because we're forgiven and we're reconnected with God and therefore inner peace. And once we have inner peace, we have a huge, much greater tendency to, to spread that peace around to those outside of us. If we're, we're full of you know, anger and hatred within, we're going to spread conflict around us. It's that simple. So penitence is, is huge, and that was the, the thing that uh, John the Baptist came preaching. Second one is passion. And I'm not talking about romance. Um, Christ has, I'm talking about you know, the passion of Christ, the passion of the Christ. His passion was to restore the, the world. His passion was to bring peace into the world. We just sang Hark the Glad Sound, the last verse was the Prince of, oh, Prince of Peace. He's known as the Prince of Peace because he came to, to, to bring peace into the world. And when he returns, he will, you know, the peace will over all the earth happen. So he had this passion to, that by his own sacrifice, he would restore us to God and bring peace to our hearts and lives. He, he, he says to us, and he told his disciples then, and it's preserved for us in Scripture, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And so he's, he's defining us, that we, his followers, who are to be the children of God, are to be peace peacemakers, because we have his spirit within us, and that's what we do. The fruit of the spirit, Galatians 5, the fruit of the spirit is, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives, love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness. So peace is listed number, you know, is the third in the list. Uh, it's, it's the work of the Spirit of God. So to be peacemakers, you know, we have to care. We have to have that passion. Uh, the Nobel Pre Peace Prize this year. I wonder how, who knows who got the Nobel Peace Prize this year. <laughs> I did not know. I looked it up. Uh, it was a share between Maria Ressa and Dmitry Andreevich Muratov. Guess where Dmitri's from? <laughs> yes, he's from Russia. Uh, Maria is from the Philippines. And she's been an outspoken critic of President Duterte of the Philippines, who has been increasingly kind of strong-armed and uh, starting to uh, violate human rights and, and those kinds of things. So she's been speaking out about that in her online uh, journalism. And now she's been arrested and uh, charged with, with cyber libel. You ever heard of cyber libel? Anyway, it'd be a, it's, it's a new thing. And I think she's in jail. <laughs> uh, she, she has been in jail. She may still be in jail. So uh, she's, she's received the Nobel Peace Prize for her you know, uh, activism against um, you know, governmental corruption and, and so, so forth and violation of human rights. Uh, <laughs> so, so she received it. There and Dmitry Andreevich Muratov has is the founder and continues to be the editor, I guess, of of perhaps the only kind of free thinking, truth telling newspaper in Russia or n online journalism. It's not newspaper. And uh, six of his um, associates, since they started, six six of his associates have been assassinated. And, you know, he's just trying to, 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 to put the truth in. Mo, mo, just about all the news outlets in Russia are under the thumb of the Kremlin and are, you know, basically instruments for, for the government. And so 
he's taken his life in his hands. And, but he's got the Nobel Peace Prize because he's advocating for freedom of speech, freedom of expression, um, uh, against corruption of government and against uh, violations of human rights. Now, most of us don't have much international influence, but we can make a difference in our little world, in this little corner that we have. You in your small corner and I in mine. In our families, in our friendships, our community groups, our jobs if we have them. If we have a passion for peace, we can make a difference. So let's look for ways to promote peace in, in our world. And the third one, third P is prayer. At the end of the day, a lot of this needs doing. Um, we see a lot of scary things. We've, we've talked about uh, um, COVID. Uh, I think Debbie, when she was coming up to light the candle, was talking about you know, why we need peace in our world. We need, we need, to, we need God's intervention in our world. Um, I mean, COVID's a big concern. Uh, and, the, and the rise of totalitarianism and the decline of democracy in some places, another big concern. All these things are concerns for us, and they're things that we can be praying about, along with the personal concerns that we have. And you, you sometimes wonder, you, probably a lot of people think, well, what good will it do if I pray for this or I pray for that? And here's the way I look at it. How much worse might it be if we don't pray? Because we don't even know the answer to that question. How much worse might COVID have been if people hadn't been praying? Like, uh, I forget how many tens, a few tens, is it 20,000 people or something we've lost to COVID? Uh, that's just deaths. I mean, people's health have been, some people's health has been severely compromised. And uh, it could have been hundreds of thousands. Uh, how long might a vaccine have taken? Might have taken five, six years instead of one before we had them. So, we don't know. And we won't know until we get to heaven, really. And we say, Lord, what happened there? And he say, well, this is what I did. <laughs> ah. So I fervently believe we need to pray for such things, and we're called to that. And prayer does change the world, but most of all, it changes us. When you and I pray, we connect with God, and that changes us. As we connect with the Lord, his peace infuses us. So time fails to speak of all the other P's for peace that I, we could. <laughs> Patience, persistence, planning, preaching, etc. But meantime, let us be prayerful, let us be passionate and penitent till that day when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling and the whole world give back the song, which now the angels sing. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, we thank you that you have called us into your peace and along with you to, to be peacemakers and thus the children of God. Thank you, Christ, that through your death you have reconciled us and made peace with us, between us and, and God. Lord, we thank you for this deep forgiveness and, and transformation that we are experiencing. Lord, may it continue. And may, may our, our peace deepen that we may be uh, those who spread it to others. And we ask it in your name, Jesus, our Lord. You who taught us in prayer to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, let us sing. It came upon the midnight clear. It came upon the midnight clear, a glorious song of old from angels bent. of gold, peace on the earth, goodwill to all, from heaven's all gracious King, a world in solemn stillness lay, to hear the angels sing, still through the clover.
open skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world above its sad and lonely plains they bend on hovering wing and ever o'er its babble sounds the blessed angels sing yet with the woes of sin and strife the world has suffered long beneath the angel strain have rolled two thousand years of wrong and warring humankind hears not the love song which they bring oh hush the noise and cease your strife and hear the angels sing for lo the days are hastening on my prophet seen of old when with the ever circling years shall come the time foretold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing and now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god our father and the fellowship and communion of the holy spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. Oh, now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Oh, now in faith, steadfast, strong and true. 